Well, it probably would be good if I would introduce myself. I'm John Hinkle, the senior pastor of First Presbyterian Church. I have been away the past three months on my sabbatical. This Sunday is my first Sunday back. And thus, this is your Saturday morning preview of Sunday morning sermon. Well, thank you. It has been a glorious three months. Uh, and I have had an amazing opportunity, not only to travel with Leela, to to go back to the home of my ancestors, um, to spend time with my mother and father, to spend time with Tripp, um, but to be away and to be at rest. And I thought, what better conversation I, we could have this Sunday is to talk about what it means for us to be at rest. Now, our scripture lesson comes from the book of Hebrews. I thought I'd read it for you this morning, where the writer says, Therefore, since the promise of our entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to be fallen short of that rest. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did in the past, but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who believe entered this rest just as God said, so I declare on my oath, in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. So what's he talking about? Well, when we talk about the word rest, and the same is true for the author of Hebrews, he's focusing not on the Greek word for rest, but, but the Hebrew word for rest. And the Hebrew word for rest is Shabbat. It's where we get the word Sabbath. Now, interesting enough, and, and I'm sure you've heard this before, there is only one command given in the creation story. Just one. Now think about it, from, from day one, when God first spoke and started making all of this happen, all the way through the sixth day when God spoke and made us happen, meaning humanity happen, what is, what is God doing? God is at work. But on the seventh day, we read that God needs to rest. And not only does, he, does God want to rest, but God calls us to rest with him. God calls us to rest with him. And in resting with God, we fulfill the fourth commandment. Now, it's, it's interesting. When the book of Hebrew speaks of rest, he's not even talking about Sabbath rest, but he talks about today, meaning today we've heard the word of God today, meaning that Sunday, Sabbath rest is important. And, and of course, I, you know, Sabbath rest shapes who we are. There's nothing more important to our Christian identity than to gather together for worship and to rest in Christ. But of course, we don't just rest in Christ on Sunday. We are called to find our rest in Christ every day day of the week. And that's easier said than done because of the reality we all face, all of us. Is that we, we, are, we are overwhelmed with burden. We're all going through stuff, whatever that stuff may be. And that's, that just doesn't end, you know, come, come Saturday morning and Saturday night and then it's Sunday and, oh, well, we're free. No, I mean, this affects us seven days a week. So how is it, how is it that we are supposed to rest in Christ? Well, I think it comes down to a matter of trust. Do we actually trust Jesus? As he said in the, the Gospel of Matthew, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I think one of the ways... Believers are different from the, those in this world. Is that we actually believe Jesus when Jesus says to us, 
whatever is going on in your life, whatever it is, I'm here for you. I will not forsake you. And I'll walk with you every step of the way. I am so excited about it, to be back. I'm so excited to be with you. I'm excited to see where God is going to take me for the next five years and beyond. And I look forward to being with you Sunday. Shout out to Glenn Emery, Will Fraley, and my super fan, Hayden Steele. I look forward to seeing everybody this Sunday.